Today, we're going to talk about a foolproof method for getting a web developer job in 2021. Hey, in the last year, did you spend a lot of time learning how to code and now you're in this job search phase and finding a job isn't as simple or it's not as easy as you thought it would be. In fact, you're not finding much result and you're still trying to break in to get that first software job. Well, today I wanna to give you a system that we use here at Coder Foundry to help you land that first software job this year. Now, if you stick around, I'm gonna give you the common mistakes that you're probably already making that we can correct to improve that job search. So let's get on and let's get that system down so that you can get a job this year. Now, before we talk to the system itself, let's talk about a few prerequisites. I'm already assuming you know how to code, but you also need a LinkedIn profile. So if you don't have one of those, you need to set that up today because if you're not on LinkedIn, recruiters can't find you, businesses can't find you, and that's the primary way they look for talent. Now, there's three things that I think can also help your profile as well. First, you need a professional profile headshot not one from your wedding or the night out with your buddies at the bar. You need a professional headshot. In the title area right there, make sure that you put the title of the job that you want. And that could be web developer or software developer. And then list the skills that you have that you're looking for. And those keywords are important. Now, in our world of software development, sometimes we have um, things like stacks like Mern or Pern. I want you to remove those names out and break those apart. So if you if you want to know Mongo, React, Node, I think that's better than putting Mern stack because a lot of recruiters don't know what these stack names mean or these acronyms are for. So list the specific skills in the title section and then move on to your about section. And if you have an about section with like three paragraphs of how you're passionate about writing software, I want you just to go ahead and delete all of that and break this down into an easy to read bullet list of things that you do and the skills that you use to do them. You can even highlight a current project in that and lay out what the project is, maybe at your current job or a side project that you're working on and make sure you detail the technology you that you're using, not the stack, but all the technology that could be like ASP.NET, C Sharp, um, SQL, all of those keywords so that when they do a keyword search, you'll come up in the searches. So you need to do all three of those things on your LinkedIn profile today. So now let's jump into our system, which is build, apply, and show. The three essential activities that you need to do to get that first software job. In our build step, I need you to build a couple of things. Now, the first thing that I need you to build is a portfolio site, and this is a your.com. In fact, I think you should register a custom domain name that reflects you as a developer. This website must be professional, it must be beautiful, and it must be easy to navigate. It doesn't need a lot of fluff on it, but it needs some very specific sections on it. At the top of this header, I think you should have a definite call to action that says, hire me, or let's connect about your project with a background of a picture of maybe you um, working on code or some kind of action shot. And below that in the about section, I need a, a clear and concise who you are as a developer, not as a mountain hiker or an avid runner, but talk about you as developer and list the technologies that you use complete with all the keywords and talk about what you build and what kind of role you're looking for. Then after that, I want you to have a very distinct project section. Now these projects can be your personal side projects that you build that you highlight very easily. And these should be laid out typically in like a card fashion to where it gives a very quick synopsis, maybe a name. In fact, we believe that if you build side projects, you should brand them too make them look like commercial grade software. And inside these cards on that project section, you can click on them and it takes you directly to 
the hosted version of these projects so someone can easily navigate your project work and see what it's about. In addition, they also can easily find maybe a GitHub repo or something like that. Just posting the code to, to GitHub is not enough. I think you need an actual project that people can click on and operate. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, what if I'm a data science person or what if I'm a desktop person? Then you need to lay out screenshots of what you're building out in a very effective, beautiful way that they can understand what this project does and what it was built with. Now, moving on, I think you should have a contact form at the bottom where someone can actually reach out to you. And that contact form needs to be connected to an email address you actually check. So if someone actually responds to your CTA or fills out the form, make sure that you check it and you respond in a very quick fashion right away so that you know that you get notifications right away if something happens so that you don't leave someone lingering for three or four days, answer back that day. And so you need this portfolio. It's professional. It's easy to navigate. It highlights work that someone can actually put their hands on and use, and it has an easy way to get in contact with you. Now, one of the sections in the portfolio that we talked about was the project section. So let's break into that a little bit. We think you need at least one to two commercial grade projects. And we think, especially in web development, these projects should be have security roles and authorization. It definitely needs to hit a database. And we have a couple that we highlighted here our bug tracker and also the blog. Now the blog I'm going to highlight here is something essential that I think every software developer should have, especially for those trying to break in. But even if you're just a mid or senior level developer and you're trying to take your career to the next level, maybe get that dream job, blogging can help you get there. And so I think you need to build your own blog software and then actually write technical articles in that blog and then promote those technical articles on your LinkedIn profile, on your Twitter account, and so that people can actually find you. We've had people interview for roles and they're impressed by their blogs more than the interview. So imagine if someone is looking for .NET developers and they come across your blog article and you teach them something about .NET. That's next level. And that leads to conversations and conversations lead to employment. Hey, if you're sitting here and you bought a lot of courses on Udemy and you haven't quite got the results that you're looking for, you're looking, how do I break in as a software developer? Well, let me tell you about learn.coderfoundry.com. At Coderfoundry, we have built a complete course from soup to nuts to give you everything you need to know to learn how to code, but more than that, break into the software development industry. Go to learn.coderfoundry.com and let's get you on the right track to get in that first software job. So now let's talk about the apply section. And you're probably thinking, oh yes, you want me to apply for a job. And what we're really talking about is how do we use the portfolio and the projects and leverage them as sales tools in the interview process? A lot of people don't think that applying for jobs or interviewing is actually sales. And I want you to treat this like you would anything that you would potentially sell. So think of this as a sales role for yourself versus I'm applying for jobs. And so we're going to use this portfolio as our number one sales artifact that we can use to gain attention to ourselves because typically most software developers don't have this. And if you have multiple projects on that, that gives you three artifacts. You have your portfolio, maybe your blog, maybe your bug tracker, three artifacts that you can push out to people that could hire you. Now let's talk about the people that could hire you. First and foremost, every software developer, either you're trying to break in, you're a medium or a senior, it doesn't really matter, needs to have a relationship with a recruiter. And you're probably thinking, how do I find a recruiter? Well, they're easily found on LinkedIn. Now here's the little known fact about recruiters. Typically they have to talk to a certain number of candidates per week. So if you reach directly to a recruiter, they're more than likely going to take your call or take the time to interview you. Now, what you need to do when you talk to that recruiter is pitch your portfolio to them because the portfolio gives them an artifact they can pitch to the company. Now, how this works is a recruiter goes to a company and finds about a, a software development role that they have opening. 
the company will hire the recruiting company to go find candidates for this role. And then they pay the recruiter when they get a placement made. Now, what's great about this is you don't have to pay the recruiter for this and also doesn't limit how much money you make. The business is looking at it as two separate transactions. So if they're paying fees, they're still going to pay you the relevant rage that you're looking for. So don't worry about that. Work with the recruiters to help you find a role that otherwise you wouldn't find. Because a lot of times the business doesn't post these on like Indeed.com or make a post on LinkedIn or anything like that. They're done solely through the recruiting firms. So you need to get to that, what I call the hidden job market by working with um, recruiters. So make sure you do that. And when you talk to them, pitch that portfolio, apply it, leverage all the work that we put into it so that they can have something that they can pitch that employer to get you that first software job. Now, the next step is obviously you applying for roles. So don't think that everyone is just going to reach out to you directly, but that can not happen with your blog and if, you, if you're posting it on Twitter. But if you apply for a role, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to LinkedIn and try to find the hiring manager for that role on LinkedIn or try to find them on Twitter. And if you can DM them, which is really easy to do on LinkedIn, if you can DM them and tell them why you're a fit for the role. Say, hey, I just applied to your software development role and I wanna take the opportunity to give you my portfolio and give them three reasons why they should hire you. You don't really wanna beg for a role at this point, even if you desperately need one. It's not this. So I want you to avoid words like, if you would just give me a chance, I could show you what I could do. I want you to have a better way of presenting yourself by saying, here's the things that I can do. And if you look at my portfolio and my projects, you can see that I have the skills necessary to be a good fit at your company. Do you think it's worth a conversation for us to speak? Hopefully, if you keep following up either with HR or the direct hiring manager, eventually you're going to break through and get that interview. Now, the third step in our method here is called the show method. And we've done this a little bit already when we pitched our portfolio to a recruiter. We're going to do the same thing during the interview process. When you get an interview and you walk into a room and you're going to sit down for an interview, typically they have a list of code trivia questions. And what I want you to do is have an opening statement when you get there and say, hey, I know you've got a lot of questions that you may want to ask me, but do you think you could look at the projects that I built? Because I think that is the best way that we can see if I'm a fit for the team here by the work that I've already completed and try to get them to look at your portfolio and look at your code. Now, if they don't want to look at your portfolio right off the bat, that's okay. So the next thing you need to do is study the top 30 interview questions in the stack that you're interested in. So if that is Mern stack, you want to look at the top 30 interview questions that MERN developers get, or if it's .NET, you want to look at the top 30 interview questions that ASP.NET or c -sharp developers get. And I want you to practice this. Take that interview question and answer it in the abstract, which is like the academic answer to these code trivia questions, and then relate that to something specific in your code base. And ask them when you do that, hey, do you want to look at the code where I implemented public and private variables on my class. You know, I think that is something that you can do and it's a well-known technique, but little used where people can demo their code while answering an interview question. People that do this at Coder Foundry are very successful when they do this. This works most of the time. And most people that are good at interviewing do this instinctively. They don't even realize they're doing it. They just talk about their code when they answer a question. And so I'm going to give you a keyword. When you answer a technical question, remember this keyword, for example, someone asks you a technical question. Hey, what is NBC? You can say NBC is a design pattern model view controller. For example, let me tell you about a site I built using that design pattern and proceed to tell them technically about the project that you built. Now, that could be your side project. It could be another project from a different company. It doesn't really matter. Talk about your code during the interview and you're going to win more interviews than you lose. So one of the things that I promised you in the very beginning of this video is the common mistakes we see here at Coder Friendly people make. The first mistake that people make more than ever is that the portfolio isn't attractive or well laid out. 
They don't want to pay attention to the design aspects of this. Sometimes some developers feel like, okay, I'm not a real developer unless I build this whole portfolio from scratch, from HTML, CSS going forward, and it ends up being kind of not great. It's not well out, laid out. It's definitely not beautiful. And that's why we recommend for the portfolio, if you're not a natural designer, build this based on a template. But if you use a template, make sure that everything is spelled correctly, make sure that it's all laid out correctly. And that includes checking that portfolio on your mobile device and a big desktop device as well. What we recommend people do is take the portfolio, show it to someone in your friends or family or inner circle and let them critique it. Here at Coder Foundry, we critique portfolios for our students. But if you don't have that, make sure someone in your inner circle, your close personal friends can give you the advice you need on the portfolio and say, hey, that's spelled wrong or that's not laid out or that's kind of ugly. So make sure that portfolio is first and foremost attractive and well laid out. Now, the other thing that happens is, is that we get impatient. We want that job next week. We just left our boot camp. We want it to happen in five days or I've been learning you know, for the last year and now I'm ready to get work and I start looking and it takes too long. I don't want you to give up if this process takes one month, two months, or even three months, or even six months. Here's what you can do. Stay patient, stay diligent, and follow this process of continually reaching out to developers and never stop coding, continually to build projects. And this is the other thing that I see mistakes that happen all the time. And I have a whole chapter on this in my book, Breaking the Code, which is accept the first job offer. If you get a job offer, but it's not the perfect job or the pay isn't exactly what you wanted, or maybe you have to move. Just take the first job offer because the most important thing that you need is experience and get that first job offer with experience. Now, another way that you can get experience is take on freelance projects while you're looking for that W-2 role. There are a lot of freelance websites out there and they don't always pay the best and that's okay. What you're looking for is to build things for people professionally, make a little side money while you're looking for that first professional role. Now, the other thing that I find mistakes making is we go back and look at the projects and the projects aren't polished. Make sure you get a third party to review all the projects on your portfolio to make sure they actually work, they function well, and they're also attractive. If you can build all three of these things, work on some freelance, Make sure your portfolio is attractive. Make sure the projects you built are attractive and well laid out. You won't get what I call the soft no, where someone looks at your resume or looks at your portfolio and they reject it because it's not quite laid out and you never get a call back. So if you're putting your portfolio out there a lot, take a hard look at it and see if it is up to snuff or get a third party to review it. So if you follow our build, apply and show method and build all the things that we ask you to build, you'll be well on your way to getting that first software job. Well, I hope this helps. Good luck and keep coding. <music>